everyone, and welcome to Wildcard Wednesday. Thanks so much for spending some time with us today. Um, my name is Shay Green, and I'm actually one of the Learning Center trainers here at Geotab. Um, joining me today to answer your questions is uh, David Fuchs. He's one of our account relationship coordinators. Um, our topic today is actually going to be regarding uh, deploying Geotab Drive to your fleet successfully. Um, we know that getting any new solution rolled out to a large group can be a little uh, crazy and daunting. So we wanted to just take some time to uh, go over our implementation checklist, um, as well as provide you with a couple of additional resources and best practices to make sure that that transition is as smooth as possible for you guys. Um, so today, we're going to go ahead and uh, touch base on this quick list of topics that you see here. Uh, actually, we'll be sending this presentation to you guys at the, the very end as well. Um, and of course, we've also included a lot of resources, um, documentation, even training videos uh, that you can look back to um, for help training your drivers and uh, making that uh, deployment process just a little bit easier. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, because it is going to be the guide for our webinar today, is our Drive App Compliance and Implementation Checklist. You can see it over here on the right-hand side. Um, it, it's here on the screen, but also you can get it in the Compliance and Implementation Guide as well. It's also going to be linked at the end of this presentation so that you guys have quick and easy access to it. Really what this checklist is going to do is it's going to help you keep organized in this deployment process. Um, it's going to make sure that you don't miss any steps because missing a step can, of course, be a little detrimental to that deployment process. Um, and then, of course, it's going to help keep your fleet compliant, which, of course, you want to do uh, with the uh, ELD mandate rolling out. In this checklist, uh, you're going to notice that there's actually several linked documents. We're going to be going over those documents in this presentation as well as going over the steps that you see listed here. So the, the very first step, of course, is going to be to, to get your hardware. Um, now I am going to go ahead for this presentation, at least assume that you guys already have your Go devices and they're ready to go. Um, and we're, we're going to be working on uh, the tablet and hardware installations and things along those lines going forward. Um, but we will include some additional resources for you in the event that uh, you, know, you do need to, to have help setting up your drivers from the start and then they're not already set up. Um, so first step, of course, is going to be purchasing your hardware. Um, each vehicle is going to require that it has a mobile device. At minimum, they should be running at least uh, the Android 4.4 or above or Apple 6.0 or above for the operating system. I think the current Apple iOS is actually at, uh, in the 11s, so um, that shouldn't shouldn't be a problem this in these days. And then, of course, you want to make sure that there is a method to charge the mobile device in the cab. Um, so this could be, uh, you know, just a regular device charger or, um, of course, we do offer the IOX USB. It is recommended because it leaves that uh, charging port open for other things if the driver does need it. Um, but it also allows so that there's constantly charging to the device. They don't have to worry about unplugging it, plugging it back in, uh, or making any kind of changes. Um, so the next step, once you have your hardware, you're going to want to make sure that you're going to install, of course, the Geotab Drive app, and you're going to update a few of the settings uh, just to make sure that your Drive app is always up to date and that the communication link between the Go device and the Drive app is always open. Changing these uh, particular settings, which you can see over here on the right-hand side, is it's really just going to make sure that everything runs smoothly for your drivers, that they don't have to worry about doing manual updates, that you don't have to worry about doing manual updates, um, and just keeps everything as smooth as possible. Um, so, of course, you're going to go ahead and install the Geotab Drive app, update these settings accordingly, which, of course, are here and then linked at the end of the presentation as well. Um, it is important to set the time zone to the driver's home terminal, um, which, of course, is the driver's reporting location. And then you're going to disable the automatic time zone updates. Um, just means that it's going to keep their logs set to the time zone in which their uh, home terminal is located, and it's not going to change as they, they cross over those lines. And then you do want to, of course, enable automatic date and time, and that will make sure that the logs are complete and accurate. Now, an optional step, which we have listed here at the bottom, is actually installing an MDM, or a mobile device management system. It is completely optional. It's not uh, something that's required by any means. Um, but what an MDM will actually do is you can, allows you the remote access 
uh, aspect to manage every device in your fleet. So you install one of these uh, applications onto every mobile device, and you can manage it remotely from uh, from your desktop in the in the main office. So it allows you to install new apps, make sure that everything is up to date. Um, it even allows you to restrict device functions, change your device settings, and it can actually be really useful in the event that troubleshooting is required. If for some reason uh, maybe the driver went in and made some changes to these settings or something along those lines uh, you may see that pop up and that MDM or mobile device management software allows you to, to make those updates remotely so it's a little uh, cleaner of a process in the event that the driver is not sure what to do on the troubleshooting side. So our database setup is actually going to be uh, the next step. Um, you want to make sure that your database is set up completely and correctly because it is essential for compliance. You're going to start on our left-hand side menu when you are in My Geo tab by going to uh, your system settings. Once you're in the system settings, the mandatory information that you will need to have set up is actually going to be your company info, so your company name and address, and uh, the maximum personal conveyance distance. Now, some people might be asking, okay, why do I need to put maximum personal conveyance distance? Uh, this setting, it actually limits the amount of time that uh, drivers are going to be allowed to use the vehicle for anything personal use related. So if they're maybe driving to a hotel at a stop or uh, driving to and from their home before starting their workday, in the U.S., there's no limit on personal conveyance, but uh, the amount of time, if any, if you do allow it, is completely up to the company's discretion. Um, so you would actually want to go ahead and set that here in this page uh, to, to make sure that your drivers aren't traveling more than 75 kilometers, for example, in, in this uh, screenshot here. So next up is going to be our vehicle setup. So again, like I mentioned at the beginning, we're going to go ahead and, and assume that your Go devices are plugged in, that your users are all set up and ready to go. And this is just the specific fields that you're going to want to update uh, for your vehicles and then uh, moving on to the drivers. Um, so all vehicles that fall under this mandate, um, you have to have the license plate and the state or the province information completed to be compliant. They can be edited uh, just by simply uh, clicking on the vehicle tab, and then you will see an automated list of your existing vehicles pop up. At the top, you can go ahead and, uh, and search for the vehicle that you're looking for. And uh, once you click on that, it actually will, on that very first device tab, allow you to update the license plate and the state or province. There are some other settings on there as well, but these two are the ones that are mandatory that need to be in there to make sure that your fleet is compliant. Now drivers, uh, the individual drivers of course are going to need a little bit more information uh, associated with their profiles just to make sure that uh, of course you're in compliance and that, um, that the logs are reporting correctly. So once you have actually added your users, you're going to go ahead and head over to that administration tab and uh, locate the users that you need to update that are, are going to be your drivers. Um, so, of course, anything indicated in red here is going to be something that you're going to want to update to, to make sure that you are in that compliance stage. Um, the drivers, you're, we're actually going to go over all four of these tabs that you see, user, driver, UI settings, and HOS settings, just to be really thorough on everything that you need. On this first tab here, you're actually going to be updating, of course, the user information and their security clearance. For their username, you can make this anything that you want. Um, it can be their name, it can be uh, an employee ID number, uh, whatever you, you feel you want to. Um, if the driver, though, does need to receive any kind of emailed updates uh, of any kind, whether it be a report that you send out to them to show their progress um, or their uh, behaviors, you want to make sure that this username field is going to be an email address. And then, of course, you're going to need their first and last name. Um, now, security clearance, you do want to make sure that they are at least set to Drive App user. Um, if not, they won't be able to use the functions of the GeoTab Drive app, uh, which is really important um, if they are going to be uh, you know, driving their truck and they need to utilize it. And moving on to the Driver tab, the first thing that you're going to notice here is that this user is a driver. When you first tap on this tab, right out of the gate, that's the only thing that you're going to see. If this is set to no when they try to log, log into the GeoTab Drive app, they're not going to be able to get in. Um, they won't be able to use it. Uh, nothing's going to, they're not going to have a rule set or anything along those lines. So you want to make sure, of course, right out of the gate that this is set to yes. 
down at the bottom there, you will go ahead and, as you can see, you're going to update the driver's license number and the driver's license state or province. Um, this is, of course, going to be a, a compliance thing. So you want to make sure that that information is up to date, that it's correct, um, and that uh, and that you have all their their licensing information available. In the middle, you do kind of see a little bit there where it says keys. This is an optional feature that uh, that is offered. We do have um, NFC tag readers that are available. And what it is, it's a little plastic token that allows the driver to get into the cab and scan it and uh, automatically associate themselves. Um, that is available in our marketplace. So if it's something that um, is of interest to you for ease of logging in and out, it's definitely something that, that is available to you guys. So moving on to that UI settings tab, it's actually going to allow users to, uh, to set their preferences. So um, I know we're here in the US, but we do have our counterparts up in Canada. Um, so here, of course, we use the Imperial system in miles per gallon. And so you can actually set these preferences here in the UI settings. Of course, that's not mandatory for compliance, but it does make it easier to read when you're used to uh, miles per gallon and uh, miles versus kilometers. Um, the one thing that is going to need to be updated, of course, on this uh, particular screen is going to be the time zone. Um, and again, just like on the, uh, the tablet settings that we talked about, uh, the time zone is going to be set to the home terminal time zone or the, the reporting location for that driver. Now, a special feature that um, is on this as well, it's actually the very last feature on that little screen cap there, um, is feature preview. Now, if you actually turn this on, um, this is going to allow solutions that are currently in the testing phase to be utilized in the GeoTab Drive app by the drivers and by the admins. Um, for example, right now, GeoTab Drive has a messaging application that's currently in beta testing. By turning this feature on, the admin and the driver are going to have access to it. Um, so it does allow for messages to be sent through the app directly, um, as opposed to sending a text message or something along those lines. Uh, so if, if you want to utilize anything that is coming down the line or anything that is currently in testing, you want to make sure that this feature preview section is actually turned on, as opposed to being turned off. Otherwise, they won't actually have access access to it and they actually won't even see it. So continuing on with our driver setup, the last tab there um, is actually going to be the HOS settings tab. This tab actually has several mandatory fields for compliance to make sure that you are in line with the mandate here. So of course you're going to want to set up the rule set for your driver. Of course we're set here in this example to USA property 60 hour seven day and we've actually built in uh, a several custom rule set options. So you can actually just drop this menu down and select the rule set that's going to apply to your driver. Um, you're, of course, going to update the home terminal information, so the reporting location for your drivers. You want to make sure that the, the company name and the address and the carrier number, of course, are all correct and ready to go. And then uh, finally, you're going to see the authority name and the authority address, which these are, of course, going to be the main or corporate headquarters for the company if it's different from the home terminal. The last thing that I do want to point out on this particular screen, you're also going to see different exemption options for your drivers. So at the very top section, you're going to see oil field, uh, equipment transport operation, um, oil well service operation, and then a little closer to the bottom, we have yard move and personal conveyance. So, of course, if you're in the oil industry, you're going to want to make sure that those uh, exemptions are on. Um, otherwise, your drivers won't have access to utilize those exemptions. If you're allowing the drivers to use personal conveyance, then you want to go ahead and turn that on. And then that will give them that limited amount that you, you set up in the beginning with the system settings as well. Yard move, of course, is going to be utilized in the event that there is a, you know, a yard available to them. If they're it, it, coming in and out of the yard, you want to make sure that that exemption is turned on. Um, otherwise, it can count against their driving time. So for our driver training, uh, kind of tips and tricks and best practices. And we put together a little bit of information for you guys here. So uh, for our driver training, we 
we really suggest deploying this to a very small group first. So a lot of people in general, not just truck drivers, but uh, people in general can be a little resistant to change. You know, it may be that they just don't like change. It may be that they're not super comfortable with the technology. Maybe they don't have a smartphone. I know my dad was a, a truck driver when I was a kid, and I can't picture him using a smartphone to this day. Um, he is a flip phone guy all the way. So, um, you know, it may just be a uh, specific comfort level that uh, they're, they're a little more resistant in this situation. So by starting out with a small group, target the guys that are comfortable with technology. Target the guys that maybe are asking you questions of, you know, I'm really excited about this change or, you know, what does this change mean? The ones that seem very interested in, in what the change is and they're a little more receptive. We typically recommend starting out with a small group, three to five, uh, depending on the size of your fleet. And then it becomes kind of a train the trainer situation. So you have this smaller group of employees and drivers that maybe could help other drivers pick up the technology a little bit easier. Um, because I know personally, it, sometimes it's easier to ask a peer for, uh, for help with something that I don't understand than it is to ask HR or supervisor or something along those lines. And this will actually help get them up and running in the system beforehand and kind of eventually make the administration life easier uh, going down the line because you can test out on this smaller group right out of the gate and then of course you can see any small quirks that may pop up in that deployment process. Um, so for training uh, you may want to go ahead and demonstrate the, the Drive app and there's a couple of ways of course that you can do that either by having someone in the home office that has watched trainings, has, uh, has actually you know, familiarized themselves with the application. So you can have just a live demonstration, or we also do have a uh, full walkthrough of the GeoTab Drive solution available as well, um, which of course is gonna be linked at the end of this presentation, which I'll be sending out to you guys. Reviewing the training materials is, is really important. So we have, uh, have done our best to make sure that we have as much training material as possible and we are constantly updating to make sure that if any changes happen within the app or even in the, the mandate so that we have to make changes, that we're getting that updated information to you guys as quickly as possible as these changes are rolling out. You know, want to make sure that either you're reviewing this training material or uh, or allowing the drivers full access to this training material so that they're able to go back through, look it over if they need to. Um, you know, a lot of times learning is, is better at self-paced. Knowing your audience a little bit as well. Is this, is this a guy or, or a girl that's gonna be more interested in, in watching it at their own pace or is it someone that needs to be a little more hands-on with someone directing them and, and things along those lines? So that can also be very helpful. So once your drivers have reviewed some of the training materials, of course, this isn't a comprehensive list that we see on this slide here. Um, we do recommend giving them the driver quiz. This is actually going to, uh, to help determine if they need additional training on the application, how comfortable they are in using this new technology, um, if there's areas of focus that maybe you need to better in your training, maybe add additional resources for them. You know, just making sure that they're comfortable, that they know what they're doing, and the good news is it's a very, very simple to use application. Once they get used to it after the first couple of times, uh, most drivers aren't, aren't as upset with having to use technology day in and day out. Um, so on this page, we've actually just kind of combined a little bit of additional resources here. Um, these are documents that are gonna be geared specifically toward the driver. Um, so one thing that you will note is that we have it uh, listed as mandatory. So this driver's guide to HOS and inspection report, that is mandatory to, and by law with the mandate, this has to be included in the cab at all times. Um, this needs to be printed out. Um, it needs to be laminated if you feel so inclined, um, but it, it does need to be printed and kept in the cab at all times with the driver. Um, some optional uh, documents that we do recommend as well, keeping in there for your drivers, um, is gonna be our troubleshooting guides. Uh, some small stuff does pop up. Technology, while crazy advanced and fascinating, there's still some little bugs that need to be worked out. So keeping those troubleshooting guides available to your drivers um, will definitely make their life easier should something happen uh, with their mobile devices. 
And then, of course, additional driver resources, just a couple of things there. And we do have a couple of videos linked, uh, our GeoTab Drive Complete walkthrough, and then, of course, our DVIR walkthrough as well that um, kind of shows our users how to use their tablet and the Drive app to complete their DVIRs. Um, you know, we want to make sure that those inspections are uh, going as smoothly as, and quickly as possible for them, and uh, just kind of outlines how simple the process really is got a little bit of uh, admin support documentation here for you guys as well you know we've already discussed setting up users vehicles and drivers in the database uh, these additional documents they're actually going to provide a more in-depth look at all of the functions that an administrator may need to perform on a daily basis so it's important to have all of your admins review these documents familiarize themselves with the process and it will actually take you through step by step on adding users making sure that certain things are updated correctly um, and kind of best practices so some additional admin resources the uh, the fleet project sheet is something that we put together for large deployments. So if you do have a very large fleet um, that, uh, that you are deploying this solution to, it's a fantastic resource. Uh, what it's gonna do is it's gonna help you stay organized. So you can actually organize how many users you've actually put into the system already, how many have been updated correctly, um, th what device is associated with which vehicle, trailers, all that, um, all the way down the line. I don't, some of you may have already attended uh, a previous Wildcard Wednesday, which we have linked here as well, um, which is our hours of service admin. Where do I start? Um, and that gives a really great overview of, you know, where to start when you're first getting this set up and, you know, the behind the scenes, my GeoTab folks that are, uh, are going to need <laughs> to get everything set up for the rest of the company. And then of course, again, we do have the complete walkthrough linked on this page as well for your administrators to review because it does help if they're familiar with the app. If they do receive any questions, um, they, they do tend to, to pop up every once in a while. So it's great to know that you, you've trained the trainers essentially. Of course, we've got uh, our resources slide here at the end. So several things are linked out uh, for you there as well. And, uh, and I'll be sending out this presentation so you will have access to, to all of this information. It looks like David is actually doing a fantastic job of getting uh, all those questions answered here. Um, but let's just take a look and see if there's any that stand out here. Okay, perfect. So someone did ask, um, what is the prevent driver access to shared data? So that was a setting um, back on our driver tab. So when this is enabled, a driver is actually not able to view any data trips data, GPS data, or exception events that belong to other drivers other than themselves. So regardless of what's been assigned to the driver, if you uh, restrict this information, all of that will not be able to be viewed by that particular user. All right, and then we have, uh, does the NFC attach for HOS compliance and not just trips history? Um, so they do actually need to still use the GeoTab Drive app to be compliant in order to manually go off duty. But if they do have the attached NFC key, uh, then on duty logs and drive logs will automatically be assigned to that particular driver. So when they, they scan in, it assigns them to that vehicle. And then when they're done for the day, they do still have to manually tap uh, off duty. But it does help uh, going forward for login purposes. They don't necessarily have to worry about making sure they're completely logged in, remembering a password, things along those lines. All right, and I did see a suggestion here to update that GeoTab Drive walkthrough. So I do just want to let you guys know that that is actually in the process. Um, so we are, like I mentioned before, we are constantly working to to update all of that information. I believe we actually just had a Wildcard Wednesday a few weeks ago that was also a, uh, a complete walkthrough as well. So you will be seeing that more regularly on Wildcard Wednesdays going forward doing those complete walkthroughs, making sure that, uh, especially with the, the deadline approaching very quickly, uh, we will be uh, updating you guys constantly on that. Um, but other than that, that, that's a wrap for this Wildcard Wednesday, and I do wanna thank everyone for being here, um, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week.